Today we'll do a full review on this FuelTech dual channel function and arbitrary waveform generator. Alrighty, let's get this out of the box and take a look. Comes packaged quite nice. CD in there, some cables, and nifty card that I can't read. I'll post a link to this down below if you're looking to purchase one of these yourself. Inside the package, no damage by the looks of it. Slick little unit. Button feel. Button feel is excellent. I like that. And encoder feels a little chunky on the encoder, but uh, not too bad. Cables it comes with, coax to alligator, uh, nothing fancy there. Comes with a USB cable so we can hook it up to make our own arbitrary waveforms. A BNC to BNC connection so we can jump it right into our scope or whatever. And a really chintzy looking power cord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess it'll do the job. Alrighty, so to fire this up, it's a nice soft touch power button. Both channels come live. Uh, you can alternate between them or shut them off by cycling the channel again and the LED on the output indicates whether it's on. If you want to change things on channel 2, you just select channel 2 and it toggles to the top of the screen. Let's go back to channel 1. Really, really intuitive settings here. I love it. The F keys down the side are much like my Rigel DS1052E scope. Uh, very familiar layout. I really like it. Amplitude, we can change the amplitude of the waveform. <laughs> really, really easy. So for frequency, we can go back and forth with the cursors. And if we wanted to say go up to 11, 12 kilohertz, that's how we do it. If we want to go up to say 100, there's 111. Really, really intuitive. I really like it. It's, uh, I don't know, simple. We can change the offset due to cycle phasing. We can go into channel 2 and turn it off by pressing it twice and then it's gone because we're not using it. We're only going to do a single channel here. We're going to go into measurement mode. That's how we get there. So let's go and check it out on the scope. Alrighty, we'll take a quick spin through some of the functionality here. We'll go ahead and plug into our Rigel scope. We'll get a trigger going on, and sure enough, we have our sine wave at 10 kilohertz. We can go ahead and change the frequency of that up and down. We get a corresponding change on the scope. Works fantastic. We can change our amplitude up and down. Do 5 volts on here and we're at one volt per division you can see we've got our frequency measuring up here it might be hard to read but it's showing 10.9998 kilohertz that's pretty darn close to the 11 kilohertz we've got dialed in go ahead and take that back to 10. one thing i really like this thing remembers your settings when you switch waveforms so if we go back to the waveforms and move up to square we can also scroll through them notice how we retain our 10 kilohertz that's pretty handy i like that uh, very very cool so moving through on the scope we can stop the scope and we can go and scroll through but nothing to see here just uh, just a standard square wave Go on through, we have CMOS, oh, hit run on the scope. We go, we have an adjustable pulse. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead. Let's put, uh, let's give you some measurements so you guys can see everything on the screen all at once. We go to standard DC voltage, nothing there. We can dial in whatever we want. Here's our triangle. Let's go ahead and move this up. And let's take it down so you can see it. That should be a little better on your screen. Works perfectly. And we can change our parameters anytime we want. We have a nice ramp, a negative ramp. We have a stair triangle. Looks good. Stair step, negative stair. So many things on here. Positive exponential, negative exponential. P falling exponential, N falling exponential, positive logarithmic, negative logarithmic, positive falling log, negative falling log, P full wave. Let's trigger that and hit stop. 
Cool, works like a treat. No problems. In full wave, P half wave, and half wave. So just tons, Lorenz, multi-tone, that's kind of neat. Random noise, well, it is just that. It is just random noise. Now, I assume it's pseudo-random, but it's pretty darn random. Pretty cool. ECG, if you want to uh, kind of fake a heart pattern, make yourself uh, look like you're hooked up to a heart rate monitor, you can, we'll have to change our, uh, our frequency way down because this is obviously very very fast but sure enough it does look like an ECG trapezoid sync pulse impulse AWGN AM that's kind of cool let's check this out there's an AM signal an amplitude modulated signal if we zoom in or zoom out zoom out well that sure looks like an AM signal to me and next with any luck should be FM and it doesn't look like much there because we're triggering all over the place but if we take a look sure enough that is a frequency modulated signal and sure enough it sure looks like an fm transmission very neat you can use that for all kinds of things run the scope again here's a chirp let's see what a chirp looks like yeah sure enough it looks like a chirp you can see changing frequency getting tighter and tighter and then low tight 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 very neat and now we get into the arbitrary waveforms this is where we can set whatever we want uh, there is tons of them for this you hook up the usb cable and hook it to the pc and you can dial in whatever arbitrary waveform you want and just hand make it so if we wanted to we could even simulate uh, data transmission if we really wanted absolute craziness very very cool so uh, as well there's some other functions so we can do the modulation and we go back to channel one we can do a sweep which would be very cool. That'll be very handy for some things where you want to set up the linear logarithm. You can do direct, forth or back, sweep, stop. That must start and stop it. I haven't even tried it yet. And start and end frequencies. Very, very neat. And we can do uh, a sync. This is just for our system information. Not much to see there. But we can also, if we go back to our wave, I'm going to dial this back. Oh, not that. Let's uh, go back to wave and let's go all the way back to a sine wave. And let's take a look and see what we've got in it. Uh, I think what we'll do is I'll show you. This is not just an arbitrary waveform and signal generator. It is also a frequency counter. So if we go into measurement mode, we have it set up and we can just loop it back on itself. We have the input here, the BNC input, where we can put anything in and measure the frequency. And we have a 10, we had channel one dialed to 10 kilohertz and sure enough, 10 kilohertz, 10,000 hertz. Fantastic, gives us our cycle. Uh, you can set up the, the coupling as AC or DC coupled. Very, very neat. Super cheap in grand scheme of things, fairly darn accurate frequency counter built in. Why not? And you've seen it on the scope that that is accurate over here at 9.999 or 9.984 currently. And our Vmax and Vmin all match up to our waveform, which is perfect. One other thing we can take a look at. So if we go back over here, I've gone ahead and I've left it dialed in to a 10 kilohertz sine wave. And if we zoom in just a little bit, then we go ahead and let's kill our measurement and get rid of that. And let's go ahead and bring up an FFT. And let's see what we've got going on in here. That is very, very cool. We are not having a whole lot of anything, no harmonics going on in that signal to speak of. It's pretty clean for the price of this thing. I don't know, the audio guys will, will have to chime in on this. Let me know down below what you think. But overall, I have to say, like, 
considering the primary, the, the lack of amplitude of any harmonics here. So I don't know. Uh, the audio guys will know better than me, but overall, I would say that the sine wave output is pretty darn decent. One more kind of fun thing we can do with this. We can go ahead and we can do some audio output so you guys can hear the music and not just see it. We'll go ahead and we'll hook up one of my handy dandy speakers that I've used for this purpose in the past. For uh, I used it for Arduino audio output a while back. And I'm going to go ahead and move my microphone a little closer so you guys can hopefully hear that. But that's the sine wave at 10 kilohertz. And we scroll down and up through the range. Now let's go, let's go back up to 10 kilohertz. And let's go to square wave and go down to frequency. We should be able to take this right down. Really loud there. And sure enough, we have speaker output. Very cool. Just a simple thing you can do. So overall, what have I got to say about this? Well, this thing has secured a place on my bench. I'm super happy with it. I'll put a link to uh, where you can purchase it down below from a couple different sources, I think. But I love it. For the price, I, I've always wanted one. It's something that it doesn't come up that I need very often at all. It's just really on the nice to have list. And now that the price for a high quality unit has come down and small, this thing fits right under my power supply, no problem. I'm super happy with it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Good luck in all your electronics ventures. Let me know if you buy one of these and have a fantastic week.